Hallelujah. First, let me tell you how uh, I I came about this um, this sermon. It's it's a uh, it's called Wel Welcome the Word. Receive the implanted word. Welcome the word. And uh, in Spanish, we have the the saying, right? The cyberspace knows knows it. It's uh, when you are welcome into welcoming someone into your house. What do you say? Mi casa, su casa. Mi casa es su casa means my home is your home. Make your make yourself comfortable. We want to go in the refrigerator. Go in the refrigerator. Mi casa, su casa, and. Uh, and so that's welcoming. So we uh, want to welcome the word into our spiritual house. I want to welcome the word. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we have a house in here. We have a house where the Holy Spirit dwells. Hallelujah. And so we want to welcome the word. And um, I don't know when, when it was. It was um, uh, sometime last week. Maybe it was Friday. Um I heard the, the Lord, um, I had just laid down to sleep, and I wasn't quite asleep yet. And uh, I heard him say, Mark 8, 18 through 21. He told me exactly where. And I said, I thought, that's so funny, I'm hearing a scripture. I thought, I'm hearing a scripture. <laughs> that woke me up. And I said, what was that, Lord? And he said, Mark 8, 18 through 21. And so, of course, I, I, I got up and went to... I went to the uh, to the living room uh, because Pastor was already sleeping, and I went and I looked it up, and so and I, and it was kind of very it was puzzling. So I've been praying about it. I've been praying about it, and uh, and uh, and today I, I finally got exactly what he's trying to say to the body of Christ. And so um, let's look at that. Mark eight. Hallelujah. Uh, to give you the um, what what has been happening here in, in this this is Jesus and um, and the disciples uh, before this had happened there was uh, the feeding of the um, the five thousand and then before that there was uh, the feeding of uh, there was some more he had fed another multitude okay four thousand and then uh, and so there was a multiplication. So this is, this is you know, where the story starts. So he's been talking about um, the, the Pharisees after the 4,000 were fed. And then he noticed that the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, see, seeking, uh, saying, um, seeking from him a sign from heaven and testing him. So the Pharisees were always, always on Jesus' heels, always trying to find out, how do you know this is true? Prove yourself and this and that. And so... Um, and so he uh, um, was telling them uh, uh, the disciple uh, the uh, he was telling the disciples about the Pharisees, and he's telling them to take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. So he's telling them to beware of these kind of people that have leaven. You know, they're they're always wanting to challenge you. They're always trying to. To, to see, you know, how do you know this is true? And how do you know that is true? You know, especially in nowadays, it's, there's so much, um, uh, so much controversy in the true gospel. They're wanting to uh, uh, make grace uh, very sloppy, as if, if Jesus didn't suffer enough on the cross, you know, for that grace so we could have grace. And, and, and there's that, the irre that irreverence when it comes to the, the work of the cross, what Jesus did. And so he's telling them, take heed, beware the leaven of the Pharisees. And so they start reasoning, I'm reading verse 16, they're reasoning among themselves and they're saying, uh, is it because we have no bread? <laughs> so they totally didn't get it. Right. You, know, the, you know, surely they're always seeing the Pharisees question Jesus, try to put him on the spot. Right. You know, they're around him all the time. And then they say, well, maybe because we don't have bread. And so I can imagine Jesus going, <laughs> the frustration. So verse 17, Jesus being aware, aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? 
So he knows that this disciples, uh, he's been walking with them and talking with them and, the, and teaching and teaching. And, and their, he knows that their heart is hardened. And yet with all of these miracles, he's saying, is it still hardened? And so verse 18, this is what the Lord was saying. He says, um, when he woke me up, he specifically wanted these scriptures. He says, having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? So if ever there was an exhortation from Jesus, he's saying, you have eyes. What have you been looking at when all the, when all the baskets were being, you know, uh, 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 spread about through thousands of people and they were never empty? So he's saying, do you have, do, having eyes, you do not see and having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up? So he's asking them a question. How many was left over? We fed all these uh, uh, five thousands and, and that wasn't it. And he's saying, think about it. You know, Daddy Clark, uh, 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 the, the, the man that died at 108, he would always say that whenever we preach a uh, uh, pastor. He'd say, think about it, think about it. You know how we say, amen, hallelujah. He'd say, think about it, think about it, <laughs> hallelujah. So Jesus is saying, think about it. You know, uh, how many baskets full of fragments did you take up and so here they're having to answer him and so they said 12 and so again verse 20 and also when i broke the seven those seven loaves for the four thousand how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up and they said seven so he said to them how is it that you do not understand Jesus is still saying the same thing yesterday, today, and forever. He's still asking the question. He's saying, is your heart still hardened? Let's look at Mark 6, a few pages over, 652. Mark 6 and verse 52. Now Jesus was walking, this story here, Jesus is walking on water. He had just fed the 5,000. And he was walking on the water, and uh, they thought that, um, that they were seeing a ghost. He said, go over here, and I'll catch up with you later. And he walks on the water, and they're like, ah, you know, and they thought he was a ghost. And he says, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And so, uh, and then verse 51 of uh, Mark 6, he says, uh, then he went up to the boat to them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. They were amazed. They marveled like, wow. Can you imagine them looking at each other like, wow, the wind stopped. Jesus walked on water. Wow. They marveled. Verse 52. For they had not understood about the loaves. A few verses before that. They marvel because they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was what? Hardened. Their heart was hardened. How does a heart get hardened? They're seeing. They're looking, but they're not seeing. They're hearing, but they're not hearing. We have to look at the Bible, hear the Bible, and hear what the Spirit is saying to us. We have to always look at the Bible in an attitude is, as, Jesus, what do you want me to know today? Father God, Abba Father, speak to me today. A lot of times we study the Bible and say, oh yeah, that's for sister so-and-so. Oh, that's for them. Oh, they're going through this and they're going, you know. And we're studying here and pointing fingers. But, you know, we have to look at the Bible for ourselves. And also when, you, when you're hearing the sermons and you're amen and, and hallelujah, and the minute that you get in the car... That word just went right over your head and you're battling the same battles you did before you got here. Which means you're not retaining that word. There's a hardening somewhere in your heart if it's not penetrating here. It has not, that has not come and been welcomed into your heart. Hallelujah. You know, like, uh, Pastor, for instance, Pastor was talking about tithing. 
you know, we all know that that's, that's something that's so controversial. People that really don't, that like to get a hold of their money and they don't want to give, they'll look at, at, at those that are Googler and that have every explanation. Well, that's an Old Testament. Da, 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 da. It wasn't even Old Testament. It was way before that. So people don't know their Bible. You know, it's always been giving of your, of your first fruit and your 10%. But people, they want, they want to hear what sounds good. So they'll go to the controversy. You know, they'll go to the error, and they won't want to hear and be obedient to what the, the Word says. You know, if you're not tithing, you're in trouble. <laughs> Let me tell you, because, you know, we have to give account when we go to heaven, not the great white throne judgment, I pray not, but the judgment seat of Christ, that we have to give into account everything that we do here on earth, everything we do, the deeds in our body. You know, and he's going to say, Christine, when you were on earth, why didn't you tithe? It's all over my word. And you're going to feel bad. It might not keep you out of heaven, but you are, you know, uh, you're going to feel bad. And, and, and you're going to cry because you, dis, you were in disobedience. That's just one example. I'm just using tithing. Yeah, somebody needs to hear that. Um, that's just one example. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you eat your tithe. Because, you know, you, you, when you, when you uh, that's exactly right. I, I remember in, in our early days of ministry, um, you, know, you know, you know, when you sit people and with people and especially in a huge congregation and we're all giving and all giving and one couple does it. But then after church, say, you want to go out to eat? And they are paying cash, you know, they're out to eat. I was thinking, gosh, these people. And then before you know it, they're in lack or they lost their job and whatever. And so as we started learning these principles, it was making sense to, to, to me. And so when your heart is hardened, that means um, uh, it's a heart of stone. And Jesus wants to make it a heart of flesh so it could be pliable and, and usable so that he can work on you. And so this is what was happening with the disciples. Of all people, the disciples, you know, the ones that lived with him and walked with him and ate with him and traveled with him and that were on the boat with him many, many hours, they're always with him. And yet their heart was hardened. If their heart can be hardened, so can we. They walked with the anointed one every day, the anointed one in his anointing. And yet their hearts were hardened. So he's saying that here. He is saying, you know, uh, uh, you're not understanding. You're, you're not understanding. Is your heart, that's why he said in verse uh, 17 of Mark 8, he says, is your heart still hardened? So he's saying it in, in, in Mark 6. And then he's saying it, okay, so another miracle happened. He says, and your heart is still hardened? And I believe this is what the Holy Spirit is wanting us to know today. Is your heart still hardened? Is there certain things that he's always telling you and you're not doing it? Is he always trying to uh, 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 reach out to you and trying to get you to know something that, he, that you need to know and you're not getting it? Is your heart still hardened? He says you have eyes and you don't see. You have ears and you don't hear. Hallelujah. They did not understand when he was telling them to beware of the leaven. Beware of the leaven. Beware of, of, of now society that is compromising so much. Yeah. I heard a preacher say just today that uh, he was preaching at a large church. And, um, and I can't remember how it was, but he said, I'll be there in a minute. And, and he, he was smelling. You know how when an invited preacher comes to preach at your church, there's usually... They study in their office while they're waiting and they're praying or in a green room, whatever. So he was in this pastor's office. He said, yeah, pastor, you could go ahead and study there. And he was like, he was smelling something. I said, I recognize that smell in my B.C. days. And, uh, and he said, pastor, what's that smell? And he goes, oh, I smoke a little marijuana before I go and preach because it helps me. What was that word he used? Helps me uh, uh, revelate. It helps me to revelate, you know, and, and so, and yet the congregation, hallucinate, Pastor says, <laughs> and yet the congregations are like full, you know, and you know, probably uh, people with hardened hearts, well, he certainly, you know, is not getting it. 
He's not seeing, he's not hearing, he's not understand. This is the leaven of the world. We can't, we got to really fight for not letting the leaven of the world come into your, your home or into your congregations. We have to be aware, we have to be aware, we have to be aware of these little things that look good. You know, we, you know, uh, hallelujah. Mm, I can tell about some agendas, but I, I'm going to get on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. It just really bothers me when Christians are going to Target. Okay, there it is. Amen. I said it. Say it again. You know, it, it, it bothers me when the, the, the Christian, the family Christian associations and churches and pastors are all, all are boycotting. And yet, the ones that are shopping there still is the younger generation. Because, yeah, it was my favorite shopping space, a place. I mean, they had, you know, good things and good housewares and Target would be the place to go. And, uh, you know, I saw somebody was telling me they have an advertisement now. It says, uh, uh, we're having your pride sale. And they have the colors of the rainbow, pride, certain things uh, on sale. And it was just like, Ugh. And I said, how can people uh, uh, that knows Christ and is for the cause of Christ uh, compromise and give them their money? Because they're using that money against you and your pastor and your church and your ministry and your everything. They're, they're, they're fighting against you and you are doing it yourself. You are shopping at a place and all there's several places for what you don't understand you're innocent to. But what you do have been made knowledge to, well, you now you know. Now you know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is 11 of the world. It's 11 of the world. My, you know, it, I don't want to judge this, uh, this, uh, some of these little children's uh, uh, stories, but I, uh, uh, my granddaughter told me, say, yeah, there's a little story about someone, a man wearing underpants. Well, that doesn't seem, it might be cute. It might be, you know, I don't know. I haven't seen it. But to me, good morals is you're not going to let your husband or your uh, son or your children in public in underpants. Right. So why are they going to make a cartoon about a man in underpants that comes to the rescue, and as cute as it may be, as cute and innocent, but what it is, it's a, it's a very softly, softly uh, putting those undertones that if a man comes in in your classroom wearing wearing underpants or if some predator comes in wearing underpants where well, the kids are already um they're okay with it you know they they you, you see what i mean and, and we have to be careful because it might be cute now but what about the future you know you know the the library i'm surprised the library has a whole section on alternative living you know, these are the things we need to fight against for our children, for the minds and hearts of our children. And, you know, and people can say legalistic or not. Legal, legalism is religious. It's a religious spirit. This is not a religious spirit when you're speaking the truth of the word of God. The truth of the word of God is you're, you're, you're keeping those boundaries. You're not, you're not what do you, what said, the, uh, uh, moving the, uh, the landmarks that are forefathers uh, uh, all the way to, to, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, uh, you know the, the forefathers have founded on the, on the word of God, and we can't go with the flow. We can't go with the floor. Beware of the leaven. So this is what he's talking about. And he's saying the reason is, how do you not understand? I can understand the frustration that Jesus had here. Wow. Because you know what? To the disciples, there was no excuse. There is no teacher better or greater than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And yet they still couldn't understand. And their hearts were still hardened. Let's look at James. I uh, bought my Amplify today. Hallelujah. I used to always preach with my amplified and, until the pulpit area got smaller and smaller. But today, I had to do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Boy, it was a challenge getting the word today, so I knew it's going to do some good out there. Hallelujah. <laughs> I pressed in and I fought. And, and uh, it's like everybody in the world was, uh, was on the phone with me today. And it's like, you know. And, and, uh, uh, and not all of it was good news, but you know what? I thank God I called off some people to pray, and thank you, Jesus. They prayed me through. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, uh, uh, so may they get the reward of this message Amen. because they're part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. Those that pray for the preacher, you're part of the reward as if Amen. you preach it yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 James 1, 19. 
Glory to God. He says, uh, okay, now be very careful. This is what he is saying. Be very careful to decipher the scriptures word per word per word and then put it all together in that perspective of the Holy Spirit. Okay, this is amplified. It says, understand this, my beloved brethren. So who is he talking to? He's talking to us. He's talking to the brethren. You the brethren. Cyberspace, you the brethren. Oasis Fellowship, uh, Lozano Fellowship, you the brethren. Hallelujah. <laughs> he's talking to you. Tell your neighbor he's talking to you. Let every man be quick to hear. A ready listener. Amen. Slow to speak. Slow to take offense and get angry. You know, it's so, you know, it's so uh, easy to get to take offense in something you don't quite understand. Yeah, yeah. So it says to take it slow because later on you'll understand. Amen. And if you understand to be a, 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 a true offense and you know, then you have to get rid of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 20 for man's anger does not promote the righteousness. God's wishes and requires yeah. for the man's anger. See, when you get offended, you get angry yeah. for a man's anger does not promote the righteousness of God's wishes mm. And requires, requirements, requires. God's wishes, in other words. Okay, we're getting close here, what he's trying to say. Remember, he's talking to the church. So verse 21. So, I'm going to say it this way. So church. So body of Christ. Get rid of all uncleanness. And the rampant, and this is like. And the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. Rampant outgrowth, rampant outgrowth. That means the wickedness is growing and growing and, and uncleanliness. Uncleanliness is a spirit and it covers a lot of things. Spirit of uncleanness uh, uh, from, from sickness. It, you know, you would normally think it's because you keep a dirty house, a dirty car. Oh, it's beyond that. It's way beyond that. There's so much. And that's for another message. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit teach you that. Okay, that's your homework. <laughs> spirit of uncleanliness, okay? Or unclean. An unclean spirit, put it that way. Uh, and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. So get rid of all that in a humble, gentle, modest spirit. Receive and welcome the word. Amen. Which is implanted and rooted in your hearts. So when it's implanted and rooted in your hearts, it contains the power to save your souls. Yes. What is the soul? Your mind, your will, your emotion. I say emotions cry because to me, emotions is crying. To a man, emotions is like. <laughs> to a kid, emotions is like, we'll not do it, you know. So whatever the emotions is to you, that's what it is. So that is so deep. Verse 21 is so deep. He's talking to us. He's saying that uh, 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 he's telling us uh, to be a, a, a ready listener. Ready. So he's saying you have ears and you're not hearing. You have ears and you're not hearing. You got to be a, a ready listener. You got to be ready to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying. And he's saying to get rid of that uncleanliness. Uh, he says God's uh, wishes are righteousness. Whatever it is uh, 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 that makes you angry, know that it doesn't promote the righteousness of God. It doesn't. It's, it produces something else. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you know, there's a spirit of, 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 of anger and offense loosed out. It's loose out on the world. It's loosed out. You know, it's it's out there. It's like every every you hear. I can't even tell you how many times I've I've run into families that are 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 in in, a, in offense and angry and an angry outbursts and and you know it. This is this is this produces. You know that offense produces something that's against God's wishes and require requirements. It's not God's wishes. Hallelujah. So he's saying get rid of it and don't let it. It's bad enough that it's out uh, rampant, but a rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And yep, he's talking to the church. 
rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And so he's saying, so now he's giving you the answer. In a humble and gentle and modest spirit, receive and welcome the word. Uh, say, word, mi casa su casa. Come in. Word, mi casa su, su casa. Come in. Jesus says, uh, if you invite me in, I'll sup with you. I'll sup with you. We'll have supper. We'll have communion together. We'll have a lovely time together. You know, your house is my house. My house is your house. And you walk together. And you talk together. And you do that Jesse DePlanis thing. Jesus, how are you today? And he says, oh, I love you, Jesse. I love you too. You know, this is the attitude that he wants for us. Yes. He, so that's what it means when it says receive and welcome the word. Which, and it's not finished here, it says which implanted and rooted in your hearts. So when you plant something, it has to take root. Implanted and rooted in your hearts. It contains the power to save your souls. It can, that word, if you allow your heart to open and let that word come in and take root, it's planted in. See, you can plant in. Have you ever, oh, I remember uh, uh, Erica one time uh, uh, planted a, a, a lot of seeds in your garden. And then we had a real bad storm and they washed out everywhere. <laughs> See, so you can plant the seeds, right, right. but not all the time will they take root. Right. Later on, they had roots somewhere else. They're like, I don't believe it, but tomato plants grew on this side or whatever. You know, so we need to receive the implanted word. If it's not received, it, it, you know, uh, we've got to hear it in our heart, read it with our eyes. When we hear it, hear it in our ear, we want it to go all the way inside. It won't root past your earlobes if you don't welcome it in. It'll go here and it, it'll just... Stay there and it, it, it won't go anywhere. It'll just tickle your earrings. <laughs> For those that wear earrings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so welcoming the word is so important because it's the implanted word. This is what keeps us from having our hearts hardened. You know, uh, when, whenever you hear people cuss, I really feel for you guys that hear cussing at, at the workplace. When you hear cussing, don't get used to it. It has to make you cringe when they talk about God our Father. When they're saying Jesus' name in a derogative way. You know, once you feel, and I remember in my Christian walk as I was learning, once I felt kind of numb to that, it, and I, I felt like I wasn't cringing anymore, I felt like I was settling. I, my heart was seared because it didn't bother me anymore. You need to let these things bother you, you know. And what I do is I just I start praying for whoever is doing that. I said, Father, put a, let their tongue stick to the roof of their mouth. They can't say another cuss word. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to Romans 12 too. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Romans 12 too. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12, 2 says, and we know this very well. You know, he's talking about uh, presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. But verse 2, it says, and do not be conformed to this world or fashioned to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's that soulish realm again, that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of of God. See, God, when you're not conformed to this world, uh, you're not fashioned to this world. You know, fashions change. I, I'm thinking the word fashions, they change. You know, I, I still like the bell bottoms and the desert boots. And I like the fringe leather purses. And you got to see my boots in the winter. They got fringe. You know, I, I like that. You know, if I say I had a headband, I'd... <laughs> That's me. Oh, your sister made me a headband. <laughs> sister Erica made me a headband. You know, uh, that was a fashion of the time, right? Hallelujah. I know people out there, you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Tie-dye shirts and all that. And, you know, they come back in the season, but that's a fashion. It's a fashion. But it says, do not be fashioned to this world. I'm not saying that that's bad. That I'm just uh, uh, giving you an example what's popular. 
You know, it's popular to have a, the nightclub looking lights everywhere in church. You know, that costs a lot of money. And you shouldn't have lights and smoke bombs to feel goosebumps of the Holy Spirit. You need to be able to feel goosebumps of the Holy Spirit in your own prayer closet, in your own room, in your own living room. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's a fashion. This is conforming to the world. You know, we, put, we were flipping channels and we saw the Christian station. We saw a Christian channel. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And we couldn't distinguish if it was an MTV channel or whatever that is out there. We were like, well, is that Christian? I had to ask pastor. I felt so <laughs> out of the loop. I said, is that Christian or not? He goes, I don't know. Let's see. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's his brother, sister, so and so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And we looked at each other and said, you couldn't tell the difference. We couldn't tell the difference. And see, that's the meaning. It's conforming to this world. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, our will, and our emotions. We need to be uh, uh, renew our mind to how God thinks. You got to ask yourself, what does God think about that? God, what do you think about that? You have to, uh, uh, or God, what do you like? Do you like this, God? You know, since we're on fashion, uh, uh, mature women of God, especially if you're married, you don't need to show your cleavage to get your man. You don't have to have seductive shoulders showing. It's not preached out there. I hope I'm the first one. <laughs> You know, sometimes our bodies get a little wide, mm -hmm. so make your clothes bigger. Right. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> because there's men out there that like these slinky, you know, and, and you can't help it if you have more, you know, luggage than others, you know. Uh, but, you know, you have to not conform to the world because, to me, I see that kind of stuff in the, in the nightclub scene. Yep, sure Tight too. clothes, Tight it clothes. outlines everything. And some of it is ugly, you know, but some people think that's nice looking, you know, but as a woman of God, we have to teach our young people already. You know, we have to, uh, 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 there's nice, beautiful, fashionable clothes. Like everybody here looks really nice. You know, uh, you, we have to show the next generation, you know, what is proper and what's not proper. This is, we're talking about conforming to the world. That's not legalism. It's preventing people from lusting after your body. Uh, it's simple. It's so simple. Let's go back to that purity. Let's go back to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to renew our mind because the world's been infiltrating our mind. You know, when I, I always ask the Lord, I said, Lord, does this still look okay to you, Jesus? And he'll say, go put an undershirt on that. Yes, sir. Or, Lord Jesus, how's this? Like, you know, I'm always asking the Lord, you know, talk to the Lord like that. You know, you know, he, he's, 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 a, he's close to you. He wants these things. So uh, ask, what does God think? Or what is God like? You know, God changes the way you think. When you get in a habit of that, of, of, of uh, renewing your mind to the scriptures and proving that good and acceptable, he'll tell you what's good and what's not good. He's telling you what's acceptable and not acceptable, and he's giving you the perfect will of God in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Perfect will is a present, present condition of human affairs is what my, I wrote this in my handwriting. The perfect will, the present condition of human affairs. So what that present condition is should be uh, uh, what God thinks, what God likes, what God wishes. Right. So, so you do that enough and God starts changing the way you think. Right. Amen? He starts changing the way you think. He starts renewing uh, uh, your mind. Yeah. I'm going to close with uh, 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 the Hebrews 4. And uh, we're going to continue this. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have to receive the implanted word. We have to be aware of the leaven, especially in the political realm. We have to be aware of the leaven, the doctrine of demons. We have to be aware of, of a lot of preaching that's out there. Me and Pastor Robert, we were hearing a preacher like, wow, that's a good preacher. He's an evangelist. He'd had everything memorized, and he was a 
preaching for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And, and, and then he talked about healing and, and he talked about everything. And, and I was like, wow, he, he, he was doing it all by memory. We had been hearing a good 45 minutes and then something terrible came out of his mouth. And we said, you know what? Shut that off. It sounded so good. The scripture, every scripture was good. But then he made an error and we said, because we were real close to say, wow, maybe we should have him come and preach at our church. And we don't, we don't have people come preach at our church. For, so it's very rare unless the Holy Spirit tells us. And so we were so close to that until he said this error. And it's just very simple. And it's like, oh, okay, no, nah, -uh. we can't have that. And so we have to be so, uh, uh, so sharp in the spirit to know these things. Because error is knocking on the door right now. It is the leaven of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hebrews 4. Not there. And we're going to be closing to continue. I haven't even touched the surface. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Holy Spirit, we just thank you what you're doing, Holy Spirit. Glory to And we'll, be, we'll continue this in Hebrew uh, 412 says the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword pierced even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart see there's a sifting out taking place you know the Holy Spirit will probe you have you ever uh, used a an oven with a, the the it comes with a probe in your roast. It lets you know what's going on inside. It looks nice and cooked. How many? I've made a lot of roast. It looks nice and cooked and crispy outside. Looks so good. But that probe is saying it's raw on the inside. It's like, but I can't see the inside unless I cut it. But the probe tells you what's going on inside. So that's what I want to close with. And we're going to continue here. The Holy Ghost is a probe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus himself is warning us of the leaven of the Pharisees. Jesus is saying, you have eyes, see. You have ears, and hear what the Spirit of God is wanting you to know. Don't harden your hearts. Thank God for the Holy Ghost probe. We can say all the right words on the outside. We can quote every scripture. You know, sometimes we can be, be aware that we're, we're not qu quoting them up here with head knowledge because that messes with your faith. It has to be in your heart. You know, we, we can't be mechanical about the Word of God anymore. We, you know, and if you've taken it apart, take it apart some more. Go into the Greek. Okay, what does the Greek say about this? What does the Hebrew say about this? What do these study words say about this? You can never say, I've heard it all. Because then when you went to study something else, you've forgotten what you studied, so you had to go back all over again. Amen? Hallelujah. Welcome to the word in your heart. Receive the implanted word of God in your heart. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Stay tuned for what the Holy Spirit is about to do. You know, uh, I, I, I welcome uh, uh, when the Lord of the Lord does that Holy Ghost surgery. Yeah. I go, oh, Jesus. And I have been really going through a lot of surgery and a lot of challenges and a lot of things, you know, but that makes you stronger. Yes, yes, Had some challenges today, you know, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> challenges today. Sometimes you just want to give over to the flesh and start crying over things that are happening, just, just crying and like, no. Greater is he that is in me. He is in the world. If you need some help, call the sisters. Call the brothers. You know, gosh, it's so, it, it, you know, we, it, we can't be prideful to not at, to ask for help. Because they'll get you to the other side. And do you know, I could feel the prayer. Thank you for the prayer. I could feel the prayer because all of a sudden, the fall lifted. And I understood what the Lord was trying to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Wow. It's good enough to not have spots, but wrinkles too. I'll never buy linen because they're so full of wrinkles. I like the, you know, easy care 
Hallelujah. So I pray that not all of us want the easy care fabric to our robes of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.